Welcome to A Safe Place with Ellen. Today, I would like to talk about coping skills and just discuss some, some things that we already do and some new things that are just things that we might do around the house. It's, it's nothing that you would have to think, oh my gosh, I have to learn something to be able to cope. It's stuff that we already do and we, we don't really realize that you know, it's, it's coping skills. And you know, we can have, we can do some coping skills that are not really healthy. Coping skills such as, you know, we might overeat, we might sleep all day, and or we might take off work so we can watch TV, one of mine. Uh, coping skills are, are activities or actions that a person can take to manage overwhelming emotions. So, you know, to go back to what I just said, that's what we do. Uh, sometimes we might be in a, an emotional state or a position to where we don't think we have any coping skills. But, you know, even if we're, you know, maybe we're, we're just kind of crying all the time, that's a coping skill. You know, and, and it's okay. It's okay to, to cry. It's okay to feel bad. I mean, personally, I think you, you we really need to kind of feel those so we can get them out, talk about them, and learn to deal with them. So, you know, coping skills are just things that we already do. And actually, if we're coming from a domestic violence point of view, you may not even had time to cope or to learn skills, or even do the things that you used to do. Learning and developing healthy coping skills for women or men coming from an abusive relationship is really, a, it's a technical foundation. It's something that, again, that we do, we might not have been able to do it, it due to the abusive relationship. So we kind of got to relearn some of the things that we used, that we liked, and that, that we aren't able to do because we're in, in this dysfunctional relationship. It's kind of getting back to the old you. You know, the things that, the normal things that we do to help us cope through, oh, I'm gonna say this, normal trauma. Domestic violence, it is trauma, and it's it's not normal trauma. When I say normal trauma, it could be, you know, the death of your dog, or a car accident, or a divorce. Those are traumas, you know, that we've all gone through, right? Well, domestic violence, the trauma is, is it's emotional, and it's physical, and it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's raw actually it's it's everyday stuff and when I say every day I mean every day so you're living through that you guys know that are going through it how how the stress is and we're gonna learn some coping skills hopefully to help us understand the things we went through and to deal with the PTSD you know the flashbacks because those are things that you may be going through now and if you haven't left or you are just left you're going to have those flashbacks and you're going to have those triggers that it's going to cause some you know anxiety we know that victims of trauma experience increased depression anxiety you may feel a numbness shame anger feel very overwhelmed and stressed. What, what we want to do today is to talk about some things that we can do to help alleviate those things, to help you recognize when that's going to happen so you can, you can prepare that, you know, if, if you know that going to a certain place is a trigger for you, then you may be thinking, oh, maybe I can do this coping skill. Maybe I can do deep breathing. Uh, maybe I can do some grounding techniques, which are things that we're going to talk about. And 
If you guys want, let us know, and maybe we'll actually learn to do those in one of these sessions that we're doing here. Just, you know, send out a shout, this is what you like to do. During a trigger, or when a victim is feeling overwhelming emotions, doing some coping skills, or learning some coping skills, can help him or her stay connected to the present moment and not actually stay in that flashback and all of those memories. After leaving an abusive relationship, and I think I spoke about it earlier, you might have to learn some new strategies. It goes back to the strategies that you used before this relationship, you're not gonna be able to use be due to the abuse in the relationship. You may not be able to take a walk. You can't, which is, is a coping skill. You might not be able to call a friend. You might not even be able to, to call your family. And you know, that's due to that isolation and the things that the abuser did. You, you couldn't do those things. So we have to learn uh, new strategies. One thing I want you to think about is you come out of this relationship and you're kind of going to feel like I have no one and that's due because you are isolated and you're going to think well I didn't call my family or I didn't call my friends I, you know what do I do I'm telling you that your family and your friends are going to so understand call them talk to them use them as support use them as one of these coping skills that we're talking healthy coping skill uh, to consider trying is positive affirmations and that's when you you think about you know positive things about yourself you know I'm strong I can do this today uh, even if you you used a coping skill and you used it well and and you've kind of you know de-escalated you're not as ang you're not as angry you're not as anxious give yourself credit for that Give yourself credit for being where you are right now. If you're out of that relationship and you're learning, listening and learning these skills, give yourself credit for even, for even watching this video. I mean, that's a big step. Some other coping skills, and these are those coping skills I was talking about. It's the everyday things. Take a bubble bath. I mean, you know, it might have been a long time since you've actually got to take a bubble bath, be alone, the music you want, stay in as long as you want, take the bubble bath when you want it. Those are all coping skills. Why? Because you get to make the decision. You get to decide how long you stay. You get to decide what smell to put in, what pajamas to put on when you get out. All of that is about you, and that's a good coping skill because we're exerting some power. We're getting our power back. When we do these things, all of that power that he or she took, we're getting it back slowly but surely. And by doing these, some of these coping skills, it's taken a little back. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. When you walked out that door, you took some of that power. One of the things that I like to do when I'm, I'm stressed is uh, I'll pick a, a picture or, or a, a something that I've done with one of my children and I focus on that. So I pick this picture and it's of my daughter. So what I, what I see is, you know, she's like two, three and she's in a pool on her deck and I can, I can actually feel the sunshine because I'm, I'm thinking about the sunshine and, and that smile on her face. I can tell you the color of the swimsuit, the everything about that and even feel the warmth. So, you know, that's my happy place. So when I'm, I'm thinking about that, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about the warm sun, the cool water, you know, putting the suntan lotion on her so she doesn't burn and the, the the smile, the, the, the pool, the color of the pool, of sitting on the deck, and I mean, all of those things. And that's what I would like if, if you guys get to a point where it's like, I don't know what to do, find a happy place. 
you know, something that, uh, it's a picture. And if you want, put the picture on your refrigerator and go to that picture. It, I promise you, if you try it, it'll work. One of the things that you can do um, in, that might, you know, be calming for you or help you with anxiety is maybe think of, of the, your senses like smell, touch, uh, visual, uh, auditory, hearing. So we'll say that you're, you're going through this, this will take work. You're going through this um, this this period or this feeling of anxiety. So you're well. So let's just say you're in your kitchen, right? So you think of of maybe textures of touch. You know the coolness of your stove, the coolness of your refrigerator. Uh, you may think of smell. If you're fixing breakfast, it could be eggs. It could be cereal. You see where I'm going with this? Uh, and visual, you could look around at, at your kitchen, or if you have windows, you could look out your windows. Those are the kind of things that, you know, when you pick the senses and in that room that you're in, you know, just stop. Go through panic attack, just stop and think. You know, touch your refrigerator. It could be the touch of your curtains in your kitchen, you know, or your placemats, whatever it is, just, and then feel it, and just be right there in the moment, and it's going to definitely decrease that anxiety. A couple of others would be maybe journaling. You could use uh, aromatherapy, you know, get some scents that you like, some scented candles, and just place them around, and just, you know, just sit and just be right there in the moment and, and take that in. And eventually as you're moving through your house, you know, those, those scents and the aromatherapy is gonna be calming. It's gonna de-stress. Pick scents that you like. You know, you could go for a walk. You could uh, rock, rock in a rocking chair. If you're going to Cracker Barrel, sit there in that rocking chair and just you know just take it in you know and one thing that most of us have telephones watch funny animal videos that would have to just kind of de-stress just try some of these things if this doesn't help as much as you would like well i'm telling you call here call away formerly Women's Resource Center, ask for me, Ellen, and we can go through some of these together. We can do it on the telephone, we can meet in person, do it. I mean, just, just call me, just say, hey, I saw you, I wanna to talk to you. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, if you need anything, 